Hey fellow fans, how you doing? Welcome to JD Jones Loves WWE ECW, the show where we take a trip in my Wayback Machine all the way to the glory days of WWE ECW, and we discuss and review every single episode until we finish or until we die trying. Now I know what you're probably thinking. What the fuck gives, man? Why am I already hearing JD's voice instead of that of uh, Tony Montana? introducing us to his old friend well let me tell you what happened i'm looking for this damn intro on my fucking pc and i just can't find it you know that's essentially what happened i don't know if it got deleted or put in another folder or something but it's gone actually i should uh, check the uh, audacity folder that's probably where it's at but i'm <laughs> well you're listening to it now so it's it's not going to be there anyway this is the seventh episode of the show, the seventh episode of WWE ECW and the seventh episode of this show. And I know it's been a long time since we've done a show. It's been almost an entire, over a week, I think. I, I don't feel like looking at it. It's been a long time. But here we are. We're back in the chair with another awesome episode of ECW. Well, I think it was pretty awesome, this one. Anyway, it's July 25th. 2006 they're in the joe lewis arena in detroit michigan you know they recently had their last raw in the joe lewis arena a couple months ago i think and you know so this is one of you know this is a show in what is a relatively historic arena and i think you know i'm not an arena expert though so it could very well just be the piece of shit bingo hall that they had the old ecw shows in I have no idea. Don't take my word for it. But without further ado, we're going to stop beating around the bush here and get right into this bitch DHR style. That means deep, hard, and fucking raw. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, the, the, the show begins with Mike Knox and Kelly in the ring. And Kelly, um, well not Kelly, but Mike Knox shows a montage of Kelly. It, with all of her Kelly exposés for the past six episodes. And it was pretty lengthy, actually. Maybe about a full minute. Which I know doesn't sound like that long of a time. But for 60 seconds of just watching Kelly strip nonstop. Is a, is that, it was a long time for me, at least. And this was actually the first time I, myself... Managed to get a hard on watching Kelly dance. I don't know. Something about the compilation factor, you know. That got me going. But right after the com um, right after the montage, like a dick, Mike Knox, he tells her what he told her last week. Kelly, you're my girlfriend. And so you can never take your clothes off in public again. And then he reminds her of what happened last week. When she got whacked by Sandman with the uh, Signapore cane. He pulled her in, but he, he said, well, he told her that he believes Sandman did that on purpose. We, we Like, if you watched it, you could clearly see he pulled her in, Ms. Pulling in Marie style. And then he left. <laughs> he straight up ran away after, the, after that match. But uh, he said he didn't abandon her. He went to go get... Uh, what the medical guys, EMP, EMT, yeah, EMTs, EMP is a fucking electromagnetic pulse, I haven't played Call of Duty in forever, uh, but I got EMP on my mind for some reason, that was like, when, when I, uh, when we played, uh, Black Ops, Black Ops 2, that was like my go-to, uh, tech weapon, was, uh, the damn EMP grenades, because you can rack up points with that. Like, I didn't get kills a lot. I just racked up points, destroying shit. I, got, I, had, I had the two tech uh, grenades. I got the black hat, which isn't a grenade, but it was, like, in that section. So I had the black hat and the EMP grenades. I would just run around the maps, taking out shit and racking up points, getting barely any kills. That's completely unrelated. <laughs> and, you know, so, mm, he says, if anyone wants to treat my uh, girlfriend this way, I'm going to treat them the same. And that's exactly what he's going to do to the Sandman. Yep, once again, he has challenged Sandman to another fight. 
And so Sandman, who steam hits, he comes down to the ring. It takes forever. The, um, his his entrance is, you know, longer than the match. But the match is short anyway. So, yeah, he comes to the ring. He actually gets in with the kendo stick. But the problem is, uh, this match isn't a, a an Extreme Rules match. This is just a regular singles match. So, the ref is taking it from him. And so, while he's distracted, Mike Knox clocks him in the face. And the match begins. And right out the get-go, Mike Knox is, once again destroying Sandman, you know, he took him to, uh, knee drop drive, you know, like Low Blow Boulevard from last week, Suplex City from, uh, Brock Lesnar, took him to knee drop drive, repeated knee drops, and eventually he, uh, got him up and do, uh, fucking Irish whip, and just out of nowhere, Sandman hits his finisher, the white Russian leg sweep, and, uh, Mike Knox is just out, which is just weird, like, Finisher out of nowhere, like Goldberg hitting a spear style on a uh, Brock Lesnar Survivor Series. He goes out to get the, uh, get his kendo stick, Signature Cane. You know they're, they're the same thing. You'll probably hear me uh, use them um, interchangeably. Interchangeably, interchange. You, you'll you hear me just use either or. <laughs> um, and so he gets in the ring, gets ready to hit the bitch, but out of nowhere for for I don't know why Kelly. Um, got in the way of it, like, on purpose, like, she ran in there, got on top of Mike Knox, in the way of the, uh, Signature Kane Kendo Stick shot, and, well, she didn't get hit, though, like, Sandman stopped and said, get the fuck out of here, get her out of here, and he turned around, bam, out of nowhere, big, roid, uh, field, uh, roid fed test, kicks his head off, for no reason at all, and they, they, uh, him and Mike Knox, they jump Sandman. And so, match ends in a DQ of, in Sandman's favor. Which is weird, because it was going to end in a DQ for Mike Knox. If uh, Sandman would have hit him with the Signature Kane. So, Sandman gets the win, but, you know, of course, he still loses. Because he gets jumped. Like, Tess hits him with the uh, Tess grade. The fireman's carry spinning cutter face bus, whatever you want to call it thing. Uh, some of these match, I mean, these wrestling terms are so out there. Yeah, I, that's why I can't fucking do uh, play by play. Anyway, and that that's pretty much it. Yeah, Tess and what's gonna call it? They jump the guy. They jump Sandman, and so that's the end of that. Later, uh, a couple of minutes later, I, well, this is after the commercial, so later, though, you get, uh, we, they are, <sighs> goddamn, Test and Knox, Test and Knox are seen walking backstage talking about how good they are together, even though they've only been together for a couple minutes, but, yeah, they're talking about all the shit they can get done and accomplish together, and then out of nowhere, Tommy Dreamer, and what will be his only appearance of the night, Hits this, throws a chair at him both, and jumps on him. And uh, this, this only, this exchange only lasts for ten seconds. Like the, the some refs and backstage security guys, they grab Dreamer and take him away. As the other guys, they will escape Knox and Test. So that was only ten seconds, really. But yeah, and they go from that to backstage. What Paul Heyman is um, telling. Sabu, why he can't get a shot at the ECW championship. And he, he actually tells, like, there's no real reason. Uh, he, he's like, you know, I know what you can do. But I also know what Big Show can do. Big Show is about to destroy Kane, who he's facing in the main event. More on that later. Anyway, and all the shit he, he's destroyed since. He's pretty, he's pretty much just trying to find an excuse not to give Sandman... Uh, a match against the Big Show for the title, and I don't know why. I thought it'd be a good match, but he says he's not gonna uh, have it, not ever. And then in the most confusing moment of the night, little Guido is preparing for his match, and so um, Paul Heyman passes by him, and little, little Guido says absolutely nothing. But Paul Heyman gets down. And is like, what the fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> Guido's like, what? All the shit I've done for this company, and you have the balls to talk shit to me, you know, that kind of shit. And Guido's confused, as so am I, and as so is 
anyone who is watching the show. And so, yeah, uh, Paul Heyman is acting crazy. He's like, I'm the lifeblood of ECW. And this is how you treat me. That's a, that's an actual quote. And then he gets his two cop guys, um, the Riot Squad pe uh, people, to jump the shit out of uh, Little Guido. They act, they, they wreck him bad, man. It was pretty hard to watch. And for absolutely no reason. It was very confusing, actually. Like, it was no reason at all. And he, um, so... Paul, he gets him, he tells him, your match is next. And he tells the Rat Squad to drag his, drag his ass to the ring for his next match, which is well, coming up next. But before that, we get a backstage promo with CM Punk. He's talking about how he came from the mean streets of Chicago and how he watched everyone uh, be handed everything they got while instead he had to scratch a claw for everything he is today. And he says he'll be debuting next week. Yeah, next week's ECW is going to be off the chain, off the wall. Can't wait to watch it. Can't wait to cover it right here in my chair. <laughs> and so, yeah, we, we go back to the ring in the vampire, Kevin Thorne. They, fun, interesting fact, they actually haven't said his name yet. So while we know it's Kevin Thorne, we, we're not supposed to, like, at that point, we wouldn't have known that that was Kevin Thorne in 2006. He is just called the Vampire. And he's accompanied to the ring by Ariel, the tarot card reader lady. And apparently, he is the one who gets uh, to face Lil Guido, who's already been destroyed. Which is interesting. Like, while you're making your debut against a guy who's already been beaten the fuck out of. And uh, you could look at uh, Kevin Thorne, the Vampire, and look at Guido. You know the Vampire would destroy Guido in a clean match, like. But this is not that. Anyway, so as soon as the match begins, right now, um, the Kevin Thorne he takes off. He he, there's not much to say. He he destroys little Guido, even though little Guido's already wrecked. There's there um is this one point in the match where he hits uh this like a rope hung a rope hung stunner like he laid him across the rope essentially and stunned him. And I thought that should have been the end of the match because it was actually pretty late in the match, but it wasn't. You know, the beating continued. And um, he ended the match with a razor's edge or a crucifix powerbomb. Yeah. And that's a, that's a nice finisher. Uh, that's that's always impressive to see uh, the, crucifix, the crucifix powerbomb, you know. I think Sheamus used it for a while. Yeah, he, it was called the Celtic Cross. But uh, my favorite guy to use it, of course, is... Razor Ramon, Scott Hall. I, I actually, I just like Razor Ramon in general. Anyway, um, that's the end of the match, you know. It was also interesting hearing Taz and Styles, the commentators, try to describe Kevin Thorne. You know, he's just this, this, this vampire gothic guy. I, I don't even know who I was trying to impersonate just then. I was thinking about doing Taz, but that was, that was off as fuck. I'm going to just not dwell on that. Anyway. So, what's next? Between... Shannon Moore. He's making his debut soon. We don't know when. He just looks at the thing and... Yeah, you see he's coming soon. So, the next match... the um My favorite match... Is the debut of Balls Mahoney. He faces Just Incredible. And what ended up being a pretty... Uh, a, a surprisingly long match. Not surprising, but it just ended up being long for uh, whatever reason. And it was a good, yeah, it was it was a long match, but it was yeah the best match of the night. I uh, get to and um, I, I'm I'm a little flustered right now. I'm sorry. I don't know. I uh, decided to record these shows late at night, like midnight, for whatever reason, because I have a lot of free time during the day, so I should just do it then. But I don't know why I, I record these shows late. So, yeah, fucking Balls Mahoney debuting against Just Incredible. And this is my first time seeing Balls Mahoney ever. And he, he was actually pretty impressive for a guy with a, a Kevin Owens build. Well, Kevin Owens actually is very impressive. He is one of the best wrestlers on SmackDown, arguably the best character on SmackDown. Um, but yeah, Balls Mahoney, he's no pushover. And neither is just incredible, even though they kind of book him in 
Uh, they've been booking him in shit matches these past couple weeks, even though I think he's only had two or three matches. Anyway, he took it to um, what's his face, Balls Mahoney, but Balls Mahoney he had the momentum and the advantage pretty much the entire match. There was there was no point in time where, but um, just incredible like had the match in his hands. This ends up ending pretty interesting actually. Just incredible gets. A slight advantage. Oh, no. The ref takes a bump. Like, he, he throws Balls Mahoney into the ref. Ref takes a small bump. Like, he's not even out. Like, he's not laying across the ring or anything. He's just sitting in the corner. So, he's never fully out. But Dustin Incredible leaves to go get a chair. And, he yeah, he takes a chair in the ring and gets ready to whack uh, Balls Mahoney. Who takes a chair from him and hits him in full sight of the referee. Who's now up at the time. But he was never really out to begin with. So, match ends in a DQ. But, I guess Balls Mahoney didn't know why the bell rang. Because when, um, Joey, not, not Joey, Justin Roberts announced the, uh, the ending of the match. Like, the, you're winning by disqualification, just incredible. Goddamn, what's him call this? Flabbergasted Balls Mahoney. And so he begins arguing with the referee. Who tells him, like, hey, you fucking hit the guy with a chair. DQ. But, you know, I understand Balls Mahoney's point. He didn't introduce the chair into the match. Just Incredible did. And I'm sure the ref saw that. Mike Posey. Anyway, so the ref gets... He, he gets hit with a chair by Balls Mahoney for his troubles. And that's the end of that match. Best match. I suck at uh, talking about it, though. Anyway, we get uh, a goddamn vignette. For Big Show's challenger today, uh, well, in this episode, Kane, you know, all it's just a, a montage of a bunch of choke slams and shit, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> and after that, we uh, so we get uh, a backstage segment. Well, you know, Big Show, he's talking with Paul Heyman, and he's like, "Think of all the fuckers I've beaten in recent weeks. I beat Rob Van Dam. I beat." Ric Flair in one of the most brutal matches so far. I beat Undertaker last week. Well, actually, he lost that match by DQ. I can't remember, actually, how that match ended. But I fucking took Undertaker on in the Punjabi prison at Great American Bash, which happened that Sunday. Uh, so it was the Sunday before this episode of ECW. Great American Bash... For weeks now, it was supposed to be big. Ch um, it was supposed to be Kali and Undertaker, but at the last minute, Teddy Long at the at Great American Bass announced that it would be Big Show instead of Kali because Big Show attacked Undertaker backstage that day. We all know what actually happened. Mm, Kali was not medically cleared to compete because he was having some liver problems at the time, and so we got Big Show and Undertaker and. There's been three Punjabi prison matches. That was the first. That was the worst. <laughs> I'm sorry. You you couldn't see what was going on. It, they, they really did fix that with the second one. But it was much better at least. Anyway. In the, the ending. like Undertaker didn't climb over the second part. He got thrown through it. So he, you know, he won that way. It was pretty, you know, that, that's always shitty. Like the way they do cage matches sometimes. Like like the one that um, St. Valentine's Day Massacre, which Big Show was involved in. Um, where he, he threw Stone Cold through the cage. And Stone Cold won because he, uh, quote unquote, escaped. And, um, yeah, that's interesting. This past Raw, there was a cage match with Big Show in it. Anyway, but yeah, so Big Show wants to know, why can't he face uh, Sabu? And Heyman doesn't tell him why. He just says he has his reasons. I guess he's scared that Sabu will beat Big Show for the title, which I guess is possible. Sabu is the homicidal, uh, suicidal, genocidal, death-defying uh, maniac Sabu. <laughs> and so, yeah, we don't get that match. And so Big Show's like, you know, okay, fuck it. And he goes to have his fucking shit match. Uh, not the shit match. He goes to have the main event against Kane. This is an Extreme Rules match for the 
W I mean, for the ECW title. And this is interesting, uh, you know, as of late. Big Show has yet to defend the title against an ECW uh, member. It's just been Raw and SmackDown, guys. And it's only been three people. So we get, actually, the one, in my opinion, the, the best Big Show ECW title match so far against Kane, of all people. I'm not saying Kane isn't impressive because he really is, but Big Show's had matches with Undertaker and RVD and Ric Flair. And to be honest, they pale in comparison to the match he has with Kane in this episode, which is also weird because he had a match with The Undertaker. And Undertaker got in almost no offense in that match. But in this match, Kane, he's all that. He's, he, takes, he takes Big Show to the limit. He's Big Show's most formidable opponent so far. Yeah, I think he does miles above anything Sabu could do, in my opinion, at least. Uh... I mean, just a big guy. What to say? Kane, he's 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 the one uh, getting the chairs and shit. I and he's the one whacking Big Show and him back and forth. Oh my gosh! And one of one of my one of the best spots actually. It happens during the commercial, but they show it uh, with the double feature thing. <laughs> Fucking Kane takes uh one of the camera cord things, wraps it around Big Show and starts choking him. And Big Show's face. He looks like a, a frog having his eyes pop out. <laughs> it was so so amazing. This this match was amazing. If if you can take take a look at this uh, episode uh, with Kane versus Big Show. I mean these guys were just tag team champions. They had won it at the uh, the, the, the most recent Taboo Tuesday at the time, which would have been in 2005, I think. So they were champions for and they were for about six months. And here they are now fighting for the ECW title. And what well, was just a big, brutal match. Uh, trash can shots galore. Uh, toward the end of the match, Big Show sets up two tables outside. And they, they kind of do that, that old spot. Anyway, you know, Big Show, he gets ready to uh, suplex him from the apron to the chairs outside. But Kane reverses. So Kane clocks him in the face. And but Big Show's hanging on, and the, the the two tables are right behind him, so he's hanging on until he gets hit with the chair. He's still hanging on, about one one hand he's hanging on. He gets hit with the third time, boom! He finally falls through the table, and you know that's nice and cool and all, but they do that too much, you know. Anyway, when he goes to the tables, he he gets busted open. Like I don't know if the table did it or he cut himself. But he gets busted open really bad. And he's, he's bleeding down the, the one side of the face like when he was facing um, Ric Flair. So it's like that weird Harvey Dent style. Which I guess is just Big Show's trademark now. Paul Heyman, he comes to the aid of the Big Show. He's like, oh shit, what's going on? And Big Show gets in the match. But uh, so does Paul Heyman who tries to interfere. But he ends up getting a choke slam for his troubles. And he's out. He's out of there. But I'm trying, I'm trying to think what happens. Oh yeah, um, out of nowhere, um, what's his face takes a chair. Big Show takes his chair and just wraps it around the head of uh, Kane. You know, the, these are the, those last years of the unprotected chair shots. And man, they are so brutal. You can hear them all the way in the cheap sheets. As I think Taz might say, I forgot whoever liked to use that term. You know, but wax him twice, I think, and then choke slams him, and uh, for the win, actually, which is interesting because there was no Japanese sleeper in this match. He he won with the choke slam, and so he retained. And he gets ready to um, you know, the the, the post match beat down. He gets ready to continue the, the uh, beat down, but Paul Heyman says, "Look out." Uh, look out behind you. As soon as he looks behind him, it's goddamn Sabu. Hits an atomic drop kick with a steel chair from the top rope. Knocks him, uh, Big Show out. And he runs away, uh, Sabu. He goes away. And they end the show with just uh, back and forth camera shots of Big Show, who's like seething and bleeding from the face all over. And um, Paul Heyman, who's like, 
with one of his eyebrows up. <laughs> it was pre pretty funny way to end the show, in my opinion. And it's, um, we're, we're getting ready for a goddamn next week's episode. This was a pretty, this was a, a nice episode. It wasn't the best, but this was a nice one. It had a wonderful main event, awesome main event. And uh, uh, what's his face is Ball Ma Balls Mahoney's debut was also cool. Pretty uh, awesome, too. It was the best match on the card. But, you know, the uh, I'm thinking about it. The main event was a very, very close second. This um, I think this was the most matches so far. This match, uh, this show had four matches. Two of them actually ended in DQ, though, which wasn't too... It, it, DQ finishes. Um, some people say they're bullshit. They shouldn't happen. I, I don't have a problem with it. I take them as a... Not, not as a... Uh, um, good as a pinfall win, but they're virtually the same. A win's a win in my book. And so as awesome as this show was, next week's show is going to be even cooler. Uh, the next episode of ECW. I, I don't know how soon I'll have uh, the next episode of my show up. Uh, hopefully sometime within the next seven days. Anyway, we're going to have the debut of CM Punk, and we get uh, the the uh, wrestling machine, the uh, 2K18 pre-order bonus, Kurt Angle, he's going to be in action, and will be, I think, we're getting close to his last match in WWE, you know, 2006, he, he jumped ships to TNA, and so we're getting close to his last match, which actually might be next week's episode, let me check my dates, actually, okay, so next week won't be his last match, it will unfortunately be his next to last match. Yeah, he he his last match is on the eighth of August, and he's out of there uh, by then. He, he's in TNA it's September. So yeah, that's a little timeline of events for you. So uh, Kurt Angle won't be with us long, but at least for this show. But uh, he's he, he's he's on uh he's. Fuck, he's in the Hall of Fame and shit, so yeah, whatever. He's, he's, he's done pretty fucking good for himself, I think. Anyway, if you guys uh, liked what you heard today, please do me a huge favor. Uh, like the video. Comment me your thoughts and opinions. Subscribe to the channel for more of this in the future, because, of course, there will be. Anyway, thanks for listening again. Oh, don't forget to share the show. Please share the show. That's how we build an audience, I believe. And um, hopefully, I'll have my intro back for, uh, for next episode, and I fucking found my outro. Whatever the hell I did with that, that's long gone. Man, I'll just have to make a new one. Uh, God damn it. Until then, you can find me on Google+. Plus. I'll be just role-playing around. And I've also been uh, playing, messing around with these uh, emulators. You guys know what those are. I'm sure you do. Uh, well, yeah. Like they got the, I know that the Game Boy ones, but they also got like fucking Sega, Dreamcast, all that kind of uh, nonsense and cool stuff. So I'm just messing around with these, trying to figure out how they work. You know, I'm really just experimenting right now. And yes, yeah, so I'm just be busy with that for the next couple of days. And I'll, 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 you guys will hear me from, uh, hear from me, uh, in the future. You could also check out Outlaw Marcus Black's channel. Outlaw Marcus Black's channel, yeah. Anyway, he just released a video. He's trying to sell us on why uh, WWE should push the uh, Kurt Hawkins, a guy who I don't actually think should be pushed. I actually think him coming to WWE was a waste. He should have just stayed on Grimm's Toy Show or whatever the fuck he was doing. <laughs> anyway, but yeah. He has his thoughts and opinions on why he should be pushed. Uh, I think I think he said to at least the IC title and the Continental Belt. I don't think the Miz the job to fucking uh, Kurt Hawkins, but that's that's not my uh, choice of the matter. Anyway, once again, please share, like, comment, subscribe. Look out for the next show, and I'll see you fucks later.